What is the most important thing that explains Elon Musk's success? What connects philosophers like Descartes and Aristotle with some of the world's greatest entrepreneurs like Peter Thiel and Chamath Palihapitiya? The answer is first principles thinking. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Rational VC YouTube channel, where we discuss all things building and investing. My name's Iman, and on this channel, we do short videos breaking things down from first principles. In this video, we'll talk about how some of the world's most successful people think about and break down problems. And we'll deep dive into how these greats action that type of thinking, namely through a methodology called hypothesis-based problem solving. Aristotle defined first principle thinking as the first basis from which a thing is known. Now, what does that mean? Well, this essentially just means the most basic component parts of a problem or the foundation. Descartes, a famous French philosopher, also talks about this phenomenon. A theory known as Cartesian doubt emerged from Descartes' thinking. This theory is all about intellectual scepticism. In other words, questioning and being very doubtful of one's truest beliefs. Now, putting aside the religious connotations of this element, the fundamentals that Descartes was talking about are similar to how some of the greats today think about their problems in an intellectually sceptical manner. In his world-famous 1644 book, Principles of Philosophy, Descartes famously said, I think, therefore I am. This quote is precisely linked to some of the theories that he was speaking about with relation to first principles thinking. Because Descartes would systematically doubt everything he could possibly doubt until he was left with what he thought as purely indubitable truths. Now, why don't we discuss what this actually means in today's modern society? Elon Musk is a great example of someone that uses Descartes and Aristotle's philosophies in how he tackles problems today. In 2002, Musk began thinking about sending rockets into space. This was the dawn, the creation of SpaceX. But Musk ran into a problem straight away. James Clear, the author of Atomic Habits, talks about this in one of his posts about first principles thinking. He explains how Musk went through a series of challenges when he was setting up the precursor to SpaceX. The major challenge that Musk ran into right off the bat was that the price of acquiring, the price of purchasing a rocket was astronomically high, $65 million to be exact. So given that this was a challenge, he began to rethink the problem. Musk famously said in an interview, I tend to approach problems through a physics framework. Physics teaches you to reason from first principles, not by analogy. So he decided to look at the first principles. He reasoned that the building blocks of a rocket were aerospace aluminium alloys, plus some titanium, copper and carbon fiber. Then he asked himself, what is the value of these component parts on the commodity market? It turned out that the component parts, the materials of a rocket, only made up up to 2% of the price of a rocket. So Musk being Musk decided to create a company called SpaceX to therefore create a new rocket at a much more reasonable price. And as James Clear explains, within a few years, SpaceX had cut the price of launching a rocket by 10 times and all while still making a profit. Pretty impressive. So given we've talked about historical examples and the philosophical angle to problem solving, and then we've looked at it through the lens of a modern problem that Elon Musk has used first principles thinking to solve, let's deep dive into actually what problem solving is. Complex problems tend to be very ill-defined. They tend to be problems that have no real structure around them and that are complicated to understand. This is particularly prevalent in the business world 
especially as things become more complicated and technology makes problems in the business world far more niche and difficult. So what do you do when you've got an unstructured problem? Well, you apply first principles thinking, but what specifically within first principles thinking can you apply? Let's talk about the hypothesis-based problem-solving methodology. Consultants like myself tend to use this approach quite often given the complex and abstract nature of some of the problems that we tend to tackle. The first is the situation and that leads nicely onto the second thing which is the problem. The situation is a succinct description of where the problem lies and the current circumstances that surround that problem. The problem statement should emerge from this situation, a well-defined, short, succinct problem that may not be articulated by anybody else in the market, i.e. the person that thinks they have the problem may not have actually targeted the problem correctly. The key characteristics that can really help the problem solver tee off their approach right off the bat are the problem should be measurable, it should be fairly specific, it should have some notion of an action around it, and it should definitely be time bound, i.e. there is a specific amount of time in which the problem needs to be solved. The specificity of the problem is important because there should be no room for interpretation around the problem. Musk's problem was very specifically based on the cost or the price to launch a rocket that made it inaccessible to other players in the market. It was measurable in the sense that he could define the exact parameters of cost attributable to each component part of building a rocket. And it was action oriented in the sense that he wanted to make them cheaper so that he then created SpaceX. And why did he want to do that? Well, he's kind of a crazy guy, but he wants to take us all to Mars. Now, what Musk didn't necessarily have was a time bound feature to his problem statement. Why? Well, we don't really know, but what we do know about Musk is that he likes to make a lot of aggressive and forward thinking pledges about when things will be done. For example, Musk has repeatedly made statements about where Tesla would be two or three years down the line that have tended to fall short of his ambition. But that's just me speculating and it's not necessarily the case. It may very well be the case that Musk had an internal plan to have a timeline to him launching rockets and getting us all onto Mars. The third and fourth components of building out the right hypothesis based problem solving approach are the opportunities that emerge and the hypotheses that are built on the back of those opportunities. The opportunities are a list of three to five mutually exclusive, collectively exhaustive questions that once answered solve the problem statement that has been defined earlier on. Now, what the hell is mutually exclusive, collectively exhaustive? Consultants like to shorten the term to MISI or MIS. And all that means is breaking down these questions into components that don't overlap with each other. And the collectively exhaustive part of MISI refers to ensuring that no issues have been overlooked that are relevant to your problem. To be as collectively exhaustive as possible when thinking of the questions that need to be answered. The purpose of coming up with these mutually exclusive, collectively exhaustive questions is to simplify the problem down to the core component parts and to plan the level of work required for each of those component parts. So what you're essentially doing is breaking down that large complex problem into loads of little chunks that can be tackled individually and by different teams. Once you have a view on these mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive questions, you can then build out your hypothesis statement. A hypothesis is just a statement of belief or intent that answers the specific problem statement outlined earlier. So what you're doing is you're essentially taking a series of questions, turning them into a conclusion and testing that conclusion. And this is where the hard work truly begins, which is the iterative process of testing any hypotheses that you come up with through gathering and analyzing data. By doing analysis on these hypothetical questions and the hypotheses that have been developed, 
The result is hopefully the basis for a recommendation or an answer to the main problem. Now, all of this is well and good, but actually applying it to real world situations is where we can really bring this to life and understand it far more easily. Here are some real world examples and steps outlined by Ileana Stereva on this Medium article here that outline how to think about hypothesis based problem solving and by extension first principles thinking when trying to solve big problems yourself. The first is your gut feeling is exceptionally important in the beginning. This is because you haven't actually undertaken any data analysis yet and what you think about the problem at a broad level may help you whittle down to a series of hypotheses and mutually exclusive collectively exhaustive questions that can help you get to the crux of the problem sooner. The second is have your conclusion right at the start. Work with that hypothesis that you want to test. The third is don't try to boil the ocean as consultants like to say. Don't try to get as much data as possible, only target the data that you think is necessary. This links back nicely to the idea of having a gut feel around where you need to look. You really want to get the most important information as quickly as possible. And finally, the most important thing is telling a story with the data. Don't get bogged down in zeros and ones, in numbers and digits. Try to figure out what the overarching story is that you're trying to tell with the data that you have. And how does that story support the hypothesis that you've outlined? And crucially, how does it solve your problem statement? Well, I hope you enjoyed that video on all things first principles thinking and hypothesis based problem solving. If you did enjoy the video, please do consider subscribing and please do hit that like button as it does help us with the YouTube algorithm and therefore helps us bring you more content on analyzing complex stuff from first principles. Keep an eye out as we'll be bringing more and more content on all things building and investing. Thank you for watching and catch you next time.